Hi, I'm Ken Scorsese. Did you know that more than half of the roads in America have a gravel surface? It's true, and that means that gravel roads are a critical part of the transportation system. We depend on them every day to get products to market, our children to school, mail delivered, and to get us on out to the primary roads. And that's why most people are not shy about complaining to public officials when they see problems on gravel roads. So when you are maintaining gravel roads, you are contributing in a big way to the safety, comfort, and convenience of your community. You can really take pride in that. The three most important things covered in this presentation are safety for you and for the public, roadway shape, something you accomplish mostly by using a motor grader correctly, and good surface gravel. I'll show you what it is and what it isn't. To do the job right, you have to understand all three. I'll explain what to do and why to do it, but only your commitment to quality will motivate you to learn how to do it. In this presentation, I'll focus on the shape of the roadway and the shoulders, the parts you drive on. The roadway has to be shaped like this. This is the driving surface, and here are the shoulders. And here are the foreslope, the ditch, and the backslope. The main purpose of the shapes of all these elements is to drain water efficiently away from the driving surface. There are three reasons to maintain this overall shape. Safety, safety, and safety. I'll explain. By putting a crown in the driving surface, you're keeping the road safe by making sure water drains off into the ditch. To do that, you need a 4% slope, or very close to that. A 4% slope translates to a half inch of drop per foot. So for a road that's 24 feet wide, you should have a 6 inch crown. A 2 or 3% slope won't be enough to move the water off the driving surface. You'll get potholes and ruts fast. They can form within a day under heavy traffic and that causes damage to vehicles, or it can even cause a driver to lose control. A road with an excessive crown is also a bad thing. With too much crown, the fine particles in the gravel will be washed to the shoulder under heavy rain. You need them to bind the other material together. The same thing could happen if the road is shaped like a loaf of bread, like this. Furthermore, the loaf of bread shape allows water to collect in the middle instead of draining into the ditch where you want it. Still another safety factor has to do with where people choose to drive. If a road has excessive crown, people naturally decide to drive in the middle because that's the only way to keep the car level. So you'll see just two wheel tracks like this. Or if a road is shaped like a loaf of bread, you'll see two or possibly three wheel tracks like this. In either case, if two cars heading toward each other are in the middle of the road, we're in for big trouble. There's an easy way to see if the road is shaped wrong. Just look at the wheel tracks. If they're in the middle like this, it's a sure sign of danger and you need to reshape that road as soon as possible. Now, having said all of that, there are also places where you don't want a crown in the road, like where the gravel road crosses railroad tracks, or crosses a bridge, or at intersections. In all those places, you need to adjust the crown and where the gravel road goes into a curve, you need to change the crown into a super elevated surface. When maintaining a super elevated curve, be sure to move the gravel from the outside of the curve where it tends to accumulate to the inside. That way you prevent the slope from getting too steep. Something else you don't want is a high shoulder like this. This can be caused by vehicles whipping gravel off of the surface to the shoulder or from rainwater moving gravel to the shoulder line, or it can come from snow plows, moving gravel to the shoulder line as they plow snow. All of this is more likely to occur when you have poor quality surface gravel on your road. But finally, the high shoulder can also come from incorrect use of a motor grader. No matter what causes them, high shoulders are trouble because they form a secondary ditch which stops water from draining off the road like this. So addressing high shoulders is an important part of maintaining overall roadway shape.
There's another way to move gravel off of the shoulder or even out of the ditch. That's a shouldering disc, which as you can see here is a lot like a disc used for breaking up soil in a farm field. I can sum up what we've seen about roadway shape in three main points. Number one, stay at or near 4% slope on the roadway. Number two, you must adjust that 4% slope when the gravel road intersects with another roadway, with a rail crossing, or with a bridge. Number three, you must fix high shoulders. In the next section, we'll take a look at the number one tool for achieving these goals, the motor grader. I have tremendous respect for skilled motor grader operators who can do a good job of shaping a gravel road. Chances are you'll never have a set of plans or stakes to guide you. It is just your skill to use the levers and operate the machine which produces correct shape. It's a tricky combination of art and science. And gravel roads will go out of shape quickly, sometimes in as little as a week or sometimes under heavy traffic in as little as a day. It is a tremendous challenge to do a good job of gravel road maintenance. In this section, we'll cover the most important aspects of using your motor grader to shape a gravel road. The first thing we need to cover is safety for the operator and for the motoring public. Whenever you're on the road, be sure your warning light is flashing. It's your primary warning to the traveling public. Here's another thing you're required to have, a slow-moving vehicle sign on the rear of your motor grader. Red flags in the sockets at the ends of your moldboard are a good idea, too. Also, keep in mind that while using your motor grader, you're a mobile work zone. That means you need to mark the work zone in an approved way. Wear your safety vest, because at times you'll be out of your motor grader walking on the road. Unless the road is closed to traffic, don't leave the work site with windrows on the road. I really can't emphasize safety enough. Be sure to follow all of your agency's rules. The biggest job you will have to do with your motor grader is reshaping the roadway in the spring. Spring is generally the best time because you have less vegetation on the shoulder to deal with and there is generally more moisture in the gravel which makes it easier to work and it will be dust free. To effectively blend the gravel and reshape the roadway, your motor grader's moldboard has to be in good condition. If the cutting edge is worn in the middle like this, which happens naturally from use, you'll never be able to shape the roadway correctly. So be sure to check the moldboard before you leave the shop. Also, before you leave the shop, be sure to do a thorough service inspection, including checking the tire pressure. Your tires need to be correctly inflated for your motor grader to run smooth and stable. Out on the job, you need to go slow, three to five miles per hour. Running too fast will cause the machine to lope or bounce, and that will cause washboarding. I'll show you more about washboarding in a few minutes. Reshaping a roadway involves two basic operations, restoring the crown on the roadway and recovering excess material that is accumulated on the shoulders. But you usually perform both of these tasks at the same time. When reshaping the road, the orientation of your moldboard to the road surface is critical. First, you need the correct angle, somewhere between 30 and 45 degrees. Too little angle will allow material to spill from the leading edge of the moldboard, called the toe. Too much angle, and you won't be able to blend and move the material properly. You also have to adjust the pitch, or tilt, of your moldboard. If it's pitched back too far, like this, material will build up in front of the moldboard, instead of what you want, which is material moving down and discharging at the heel, or trailing end of the blade. And if the moldboard is pitched too far forward, the material doesn't roll across the face of the blade and won't mix. Also, this pitch doesn't allow the blade to cut into a hard surface, so you won't be able to trim out little depressions to reshape the road. The blade will just skip along the surface with no real benefit. The pitch you want depends on what you need to do. To cut in and reshape the surface, you want the moldboard like this. To smooth a road, you want the cutting edge almost at a right angle to the surface, like this. And to spread material, you want the blade somewhere in between those extremes. To be sure you're getting the right crown, keep an eye on your slope meter or crown gauge. 
Remember, you want at or near 4%. While reshaping the road, be sure to take advantage of your motor grader's articulation feature. In other words, the hinge in the middle, which can improve your stability, and it allows you to gain more angle on the mallboard when you're moving a lot of material from the shoulder to the center. You also need to compensate for your motor grader's side drift by leaning the tops of your front wheels in the direction in which you're casting material. As you reshape the surface, you need to get rid of potholes, ruts, and washboarding. Several things cause washboarding. Drivers create it when they brake and then accelerate aggressively at intersections and on hills. But other causes are poor quality surface gravel and lack of moisture in the gravel. And you could cause washboarding by running your motor grader too fast. So keep it down to about three to five miles per hour. As you use the motor grader, one key to reducing washboarding is to be sure you're blending the surface gravel as you move it. After reshaping a roadway or adding fresh gravel, it's best to compact the surface with a roller. That helps bind the stone and the fine material together, and that helps hold the surface in place. You can do a good job with several kinds of rollers. When compacting, it's important to have the right moisture content in the gravel so the material stays in place. After you've done your major reshaping in the spring, it's important to follow up with routine maintenance during the summer and fall. To keep the road in good condition, use a light trimming action to remove minor surface defects and at the same time move gravel that has accumulated on the shoulder back to the driving surface. Oh, and one last thought about using your motor grader. One thing it can't compensate for is weak subgrade soil. If that's what's causing surface problems, then you will have to improve the subgrade. And that can only be done by removing and replacing subgrade materials or by improving its performance in some other way. Okay, let's review the most important points about using a motor grader. First is safety for you and the public. Keep that in mind always. Next, make sure your motor grader is in good condition before you leave the shop. Go slow to avoid loping or bouncing. Pay close attention to both the angle and the pitch of your moldboard. Use articulation and wheel lean to maintain better control of the machine. Reshape the road in the spring by recovering gravel from the shoulder or ditch and moving it into the center to maintain the approximate 4% crown. Then maintain shape the rest of the year with light blading. Be sure you blend the material as you move it. That helps reduce washboarding, potholes, and rutting. And if possible, after shaping, compact the surface with a roller to keep the gravel in place. And speaking of gravel, the next section will show you what good gravel is and what it isn't. As we saw in the previous section, there's a lot you can do with a motor grader to improve a gravel road. But, if the road has poor surface gravel, your motor grader will be of little help. In fact, about half of all problems on gravel roads are caused by bad gravel. So it's important that you understand what good gravel is. In this section, I'll show you what you need to know. First, each public agency should adopt a surface gravel specification and should use it when it's time to purchase gravel. Speaking of that, Let's go to a pit for a first-hand look at what good surface gravel is. Actually, the first thing I want to show you here at the pit area is what good gravel isn't. A common source of problems is using base gravel for gravel surfacing. While they may look similar, they're really quite different. Base gravel on average has about 10% less fines to make it drainable. However, that's part of the problem that causes potholes, rutting, and washboarding on gravel roads. Now here's what we came for. Good surface gravel. It's good surface gravel because it has a good gradation, or in other words, a specified mixture of different sized particles. And ideally, the largest particle is no larger than 3 quarter inch in its longest dimension. But it also has sand. See all these little particles? They'll fill in the spaces between the big pieces and help lock the material in place. The third component of good surface gravel is 8 to 15 percent fines. Fines are the glue that keep the road surface bound together. They also keep the gravel from blowing away, washing away, or being dislodged and thrown by vehicles. 
Plasticity is a technical term for something that good surface gravel has and other gravels don't. Plasticity means that the material sticks together and it resists falling apart. There was an old test, a field test, in which you simply made a ball out of it. If it remains bound, it's clay. If it doesn't, the fines are silt. But if there's any doubt, you must have it tested. It's almost impossible to find good natural surface gravel occurring naturally in the gravel bank. There it's called pit run, but it should be processed by crushing. By crushing the material, you fracture a portion of the stone. It then has sharp edges, which allows those pieces to interlock or wedge together in the fines. If you use natural rounded stones, they will dislodge much easier under traffic, and that leaves the fines exposed to be washed away by rain or blown away by wind. So at the end of the day, crushed gravel helps you to avoid washboarding, to reduce the amount of material that builds up along the shoulder, and it reduces overall maintenance costs. Pretty good deal, huh? When you bring in fresh gravel to resurface a road, you have to consider its moisture content. If it's too dry, you'll need to add water so it will take shape and compact. But if it's too wet, you'll have to work it with your motor grater so that some of the moisture will evaporate. Okay, let's review the main points about surface gravel. About half of all problems on gravel roads are because of poor gravel. So be sure that you get good surface gravel. Each agency should adopt a surface gravel spec. And base aggregate is not good surface aggregate or surface gravel. You need the right gradation. Ideally, every piece of good surface gravel is smaller than 3 quarter inch, and about 8 to 15 percent of your gravel should be fines. And you want enough clay in the fines for good plasticity. You can't dig good surface gravel out of the ground. It has to be correctly processed by people who know what they're doing. When you get to the work site, you may have to adjust the content to make it work right and hold its shape. After you've reshaped the road and placed fresh gravel, you need to consider dust control. That's what we'll look at in the next section. There are four reasons for doing dust control. First of all, and very importantly, safety. Drivers need to see what's on the road ahead of them. Second, it keeps the fine material confined in the gravel so that it cannot blow away during dry periods, which saves money in the long run. Third, it keeps local residents happy and you're serving your neighbors well by doing this. Fourth, it reduces the need for frequent blade maintenance and the need for adding surface gravel. It's a good economic decision. Although there are several options, most agencies are currently using the chlorides for dust control, either magnesium chloride or calcium chloride. These products control dust because they draw moisture from the air and keep the surface damp. The technical term is they're hygroscopic. And because they draw moisture from the air and keep the surface damp, that's what keeps the dust down. I'd like to emphasize, dust control always works better with good surface gravel in place and the right crown at or near 4% on the driving surface. So to quickly review, you do dust control to increase safety, to save money, to keep your local residents happy, and to reduce routine maintenance. Most agencies are using chloride products, and dust control works best with at or near 4% crown on the driving surface and with good surface gravel in place. In the next section, I'll point you in the direction of some other good resources. In this presentation, we covered the basics of gravel road maintenance. For more information, you can go to other important resources. One good resource is your co-workers, especially those with skill and experience. Ask them questions. Another good resource is your state's local technical assistance program, or LTAP. It sponsors workshops on gravel road maintenance and many other topics. There's also this U.S. Federal Highway Administration Guide to Gravel Road Maintenance. It's available on the LTAP website. Ask for report number LTAP 02 dash zero zero two. You can get a set of videos on gravel road maintenance from the U.S. Forest Service. Some equipment manufacturers also put out videos on how to use their products. And you can get good information from the National Association of County Engineers and the American Public Works Association. 
Finally, many states publish specifications on gravel and gravel road maintenance. Contact your DOT engineer for more on that. All these resources will help. But remember, good gravel roads happen when workers take pride in their work because they care about their neighbors. I'm Ken Scorson. Good luck and keep up the good work.